Students, welcome to this uh, revision uh, video. And uh, today I will be talking about the rivalry boards in Chota Nagpur. Uh, yesterday or the last in my last video, I have already talked about the Christian missionaries and uh, how this uh, tribe was in fact actually uh, infected by the Britishers and then uh, uh, how they were actually deprived of their like uh, opportunities, rights, and uh, their land and property. So today, uh, tribal rivers in Chota Nagpur. Uh, there are very many uh, like rivers has been taken place in this uh, Chota Nagpur. So let us know uh, here uh, very uh, clearly. Now see, uh, we have uh, seen that the tribal rivers in India were actually a result of the British encroachment on their lands, especially that is the main reason. And the tribal communities actually were a uh, like a close knit group of people who had like limited interaction with the non tribal population. So that is also very clear that we have seen that the most of the tribes where they don't contact, they don't keep relationship with the other uh, mainstream society, and they keep separate themselves because their system, their customs are totally different, not uh, from the mainstream. Because the mainstream we consider like a, we are very highly qualified and uh, uh, we know about the everything world and uh, medication, science, all these things we actually uh, think of. But uh, here we have seen that uh, these tribes were, even though they don't have this kind of like a system and yet they are uh, very healthy, very uh, strong and uh, they are the intact people in fact. And they are the original actually, the uh, things are happening. Whereas we, we consider ourselves uh, from the mainstream, but then uh, we actually grow, grew actually with a mixed culture, okay, mixed languages and all. So, however, uh, uh, they considered the non-tribal population and especially the British officials and the landlords and the moneylenders as outsiders, especially they call it Dikhus. Then uh, during the British period, you know, the Chota Nagpur region witnessed a series of rebellion. Why? Because most of the this, uh, people actually took the advantage of this uh, tribes and then I started uh, occupying, trying to uh, manipulate them and uh, try to exploit them. So that's why they actually found themselves uneasy and then uh, in retaliation actually they uh, start the revolt. So first uh, we have uh, we have one of the uh, revolt that has taken place uh, that is called Coal Rebellion that is in the year of 1827. So here the Coals were actually inhabitants of Chota Nagpur region. And in 1820, especially we have to remember, the king of Porhat accepted the British control. Now Porhat is a, from the this a, tribal uh, uh, setup actually. So he actually accepted the British control and then he agreed to pay huge taxes to them. So this Porhat, in fact, he, what happened? He uh, started uh, uh, dominating the tribals and then uh, collecting the taxes from them. Uh, but in a tribals, these kind of systems were not existed. Not uh, no collection, nothing is uh, uh, existed. So rather, this uh, tribals found very difficult to pay the tax to the uh, this king and then uh, uh, to support the Britishers. So it was very difficult for the tribals. So therefore, they actually didn't agree what the agreement actually done by this uh, Porhat uh, uh, the king. So therefore, what when the coast did not agree and then. Uh, uh, to this arrangement and uh, they rebelled and so the coast used traditional weapons you know um, in retaliation uh, this coast actually started uh, fighting against this uh, uh, tribes uh, especially for huts and then uh, uh, they were against this uh, rules so they started uh, fighting with their uh, primitive uh, way of uh, using the uh, weapons especially bows and uh, arrows so uh, but in front of the uh, British, uh, these other things are actually no use. Uh, it doesn't, uh, it did not work in fact. So what happens, uh, the troops were actually uh, overpowered uh, on these uh, tribals. And uh, you know, uh, the coast were actually exploited after this uh, defeat. And then uh, uh, especially like a non Adivasi Tekadar, contractors we uh, call them. So they felt threatened by the encroachment of the British Jamindars and uh, other non tribals and thus revolted against them. So it means uh, the moment they were actually defeated, the moment they were actually uh, came under the suppression of the Britishers, you know, uh, they, they were threatened, they were uh, uh, so much like uh, started uh, exploiting and then, uh, you know, uh, besides the Britishers, actually Jamindars and other non-tribal people also actually threatened them and they started uh, taking the advantage on them. 
so here the british were actually able to suppress the rebellion but there lot of lives were actually lost during the rebellion so that is uh, happens uh, whenever any battle is taking place certainly somebody will be dying only and uh, that is the uh, things are happening in every even the war battle is also taking place some people will die only by uh, by uh, the battles uh, uh, you know so that is a uh, very common next we have got like santhar rebellion now santhar rebellion also one of the rebellion for this uh, uh, outsiders how they have actually exploited them so you can see that uh, here the santhal tribes actually inhabited the santhal uh, parganas in jharkhand and the people of santhal tribe were actually unhappy after the british introduced the system of like a, uh, uh, the permanent settlement the permanent settlement what the, here the jamindars actually becomes the uh, what called the middlemen and then uh, they are actually collecting the revenue and then uh, you know uh, the percentage that is kept by the jamindars 11% uh, it seems to be like a very small but then uh, you know the jamindars were actually doing the other tricks to capture the land and uh, uh, properties uh, whenever they were collecting the revenues so therefore uh, they were now actually uh, reduce uh, to the status of the tenants on their own land and many of their tribal chiefs uh, were actually replaced by non tribal landlords so whenever uh, the tribal landlords were actually kept uh, that time uh, tribes were more or less they were a little bit okay but uh, the moment they, they were replaced then the non tribal people when they became the uh, this uh, particular uh, system to go on then uh, the tribes found difficult because uh, the treatment that was actually received from the non tribals uh, was actually harsh and very rude so therefore the tribes people in fact they much uh, very much they are actually insulted they were very much angry so that's why what happened here uh, uh, the british initiated the construction of the railways even in this uh, tribes and uh, uh, as a result of that you know most of the tribal people who were living in the forestry uh, they have to be deprived of the the land and then uh, houses and uh, cattles so they found very difficult here so uh, in 1853 you know the british started the construction of a railway track in the santhal pargana region and this angered the santhal tribe as they felt that their traditional life was actually going to change drastically with a railway track passing through this uh, region so this is how actually the uh, uh, santhals in fact uh, very much like a aggressive uh, at this moment so with the implementation of the like a permanent settlement the santhals felt uh, detached uh, from their land a land which uh, they considered blessed by their ancestors these recent uh, men actually built up and uh, took the form of the santhal rebellion in 1855 so that is the rebellion has been taken place and uh, they actually raise up one slogan called hal hal is a term used to describe a uh, liber uh, liberation movement so the british efforts to expand their colonial uh, power that is say irked the tribal people and you can see that uh, what happened here uh, uh, in no time you know a rebellion spread across bihar odisha uh, then uh, you know the santhal hal was actually led by four brothers that's uh, siddhu kanhu chan and uh, this uh, bhairav so these are the four brothers in fact they joined together and they started protesting they raised up the weapons and then they started uh, what called fighting against the britishers so the santhas considered the british officials jamindars and manilanders they are enemies and under the leadership of the uh, sidhu and the kanhu the santhas declared their independence from the british a violent confrontation you know uh, occurred when the police uh, came to arrest sidhu and kanhu and this uh, confrontation you know what happened transformed into a rebellion and many police officers jamindars and many landers were actually killed here at this time because they uh, in a huge group they actually started uh, battling then the tribes also actually captured a lot of land stretching from the uh, rajmahal hills that is a uh, bhagalpur to birbhum these are the areas then uh, to suppress the rebellion you know the british actually sent armed forces and uh, declared martial law and the armed forces actually were successful in uh, suppressing the rebellion many uh, like uh, people from the santhal tribe were actually killed and a uh, siddhu and a uh, kanhu were also caught and the santhal rebellion forced the british to enact the santhal pargana tenancy act 
to protect the tribal people. So from that time onwards, you know, the British understood that uh, these people were, uh, these people should be protected. So they put the uh, the Santhal Parganas uh, Tenancy Act to protect the tribal people, and the village headman was given the authority to maintain law and order, and the police stations in the tribal area was actually removed. So here they have given the uh, some other uh, systems. So how this say martial law actually applied and then uh, this say uh, Santhas were actually suppressed by the Britishers. Okay. So here you can find. Next we have got the Munda tribes, Munda rebellion we can call it. So that Munda rebellion has been taken place in the year of 1895 uh, to 1900. Okay. So the Mundas were actually the tribal community that uh, live in Bihar and they practice a, uh, that is a Thundkari or Khundkari we can call it Khundkari which was a system of traditional land ownership. So here you can see that uh, they are uh, owner of the land in fact. So uh, then after that you can see that uh, the British actually introduced the zamindari system even here also. So which led to the land being taken by the non-tribal people. Here also the non-tribal people actually started capturing it. So uh, this is the problem actually everywhere uh, found that uh, non-tribal people are whenever they are uh, going and uh, trying to capture then you see uh, there is a rebel state village because they are uh, very rude and uh, they are uh, misbehavior, misconduct and uh, indiscipline way of they are actually implementing their uh, rules there. So they uh, found very difficult to adjust with them. So here, uh, <coughs> like uh, the Mundas became tenants on their own land. Uh, they became the tenants on their own land and then were forced to pay rent to the Zamindars who acted as uh, agents of the British. And the tribes were actually exploited and if they were unable to pay rent, they were removed from their ancestral land and uh, their inability to pay up their uh, debts forced them to become bonded laborers. Now you have to realize that how, why in India the poor uh, increase, the poor people increase. Why? Because of the, these are the regions. So uh, as we just go ahead with the uh, uh, different activities and different uh, like uh, uh, studies you will come to know that uh, the poor the number of the poor people have increased because of the this kind of things were happened because the non tribals were going and uh, they are charging them they were uh, when they were unable to pay the tax then they were removed from their property from their land and you know uh, to survive themselves you know they sometimes started begging the sometimes uh, doing the some uh, very dirty work and all and then uh, you know Thief and all these things started increasing because of the uh, you are re you removed from the like uh, these people. So this is the main region today. So therefore, you know those who were doing this kind of uh, like uh, uh, removing them from their land and property, they are the actually the uh, traitor for the country. They are the uh, we can call it in Hindi Desdruhi, is you know. So they were all with the Britishers. So these people are actually very uh, useless and. Uh, uh, they are uh, not good at all okay so we should uh, we should uh, really uh, tell that the zamindars uh, are very uh, dirty people in fact they are dirty people they don't consider our own people to be a human being hmm? here they themselves are uh, taking the advantage okay so therefore uh, many of the like these tribes actually became the bonded laborers and uh, they started working under them so the practice of this uh, forced labor was actually known as the Bed Begari and the tribal held the dikus responsible for their misery. So uh, this is very clear, the outsiders actually made this uh, tribes miserable and uh, uh, this condition that became because of the this uh, outsiders, especially this uh, uh, contractors, jamindars from the plain. Okay, then Munda rebellion was actually uh, led by Birsa Munda and he was a young uh, like a tribal leader who in short span of time actually mobilized the Mundas against the British. And he was also the successful in a pressurizing the colonial rulers to implement laws for the protection of tribal land rights. So he appealed to the Britishers that uh, you should not do the, our tribal people this way. You have to uh, protect us because we are the uh, people who belong to this country and then we are the original. Hmm? So this, these are the part of the Adivasis in fact, okay? So they are the original people. When we talk about the Adivasis, Adi means what? Right from the beginning. And Vasis means the people, 
okay so that is the thing actually mentioned here so he was also successful because he pressurized this uh, Britishers to protect them so the Munda rebellion actually began under the leadership of Birsa Munda uh, with the objective to end the British rule so he didn't want that British rule should be ruled uh, to overcome to dominate on this uh, group so it was known uh, as the uh, Ulugan or a great revolt okay when the Muda revolt has been taken place it is known as the great revolt and his followers considered him a representative of God now uh, Birsa in fact became uh, a kind of like a uh, Masiha a kind of like a uh, protector for the Munda tribes. So, Birsa Munda actually protested against the encroachment uh, uh, that is a uh, encroachment of uh, tribal lands by the British and the Munda rebellion took place in the Chota Nagpur region uh, where Birsa declared uh, his uh, tribal people from the British rule and the uh, movement took uh, a violent turn when uh, government officers, Christian missionaries and uh, landlords were attacked. Okay. Why they were attacked? Because it is the region. Why? Whenever there is a poor people, miserable people, uh, no food, no clothes, no lodging, then the people are going and converting them into the other uh, religions. So therefore, people were very much aggress aggressive on that and they were angry about So here, uh, the people of Munda tribe used primitive weapons like bows and arrows and the British were able to contain the rebellion. Okay? So here, the Vishwamundra was actually arrested by the British uh, police in March 1900 and the, uh, he was uh, put in the jail. Although the British were actually successful in suppressing the Munda rebellion, you know. But the British's effort forced the, forced the colonial leaders to change the laws to suit the needs of the tribals. And the British passed the Chota Nagpur Tennessee Act in 1908, providing relief to the local inhabitants as it banned forced uh, labor in tribal areas. So the Britishers actually uh, stopped the, uh, this, uh, uh, especially this uh, uh, Jamindars and uh, uh, landlords were actually made the bonded labor, you know. So that one they stopped, Britishers stopped them from doing so. So that particular law was actually passed in the year of 1908. Okay, so uh, anyway, uh, students, these are the few things that is, uh, we have to really know about the tribals. And you know many uh, information actually are not given in this book. Uh, there are many uh, information about the tribals, why the tribals were very important for our country. And uh, uh, we may think of that uh, they are uh, living in the forest and they may uh, destroy the forest, but that is not the correct one. So we have to see how these uh, tribals were actually living and uh, how they were actually enjoying the living in the forestry. And they, in fact, these people were protecting the forest. But our plain uh, people, outside people only are destroying the tree, you know. Uh, as long as the tribals were living in the forest, you know, that forest is uh, safe, forest is uh, protected. But uh, suppose once the, that area will be taken by the plane, then they will cut and clear the jungle, everything and destroy it. So that is actually happening in this country, in every part of this uh, area. Okay. So however, uh, we will talk about in the next uh, video about the rebels of Northeast India. So here also we have got many information about uh, knowing. Okay. So thank you.